In parts of Asia, royalty is revered. And when it comes to the king of rock and roll, there's no exception. Elvis Presley is alive and well and has a huge legion of loyal followers. Susan Yu now talks to those who have made it their lifetime's passion to be, well, Elvis. This is a gathering of an unusual kind. You have a doctor, a government bomb expert, businessmen, students, a housewife, and an accountant. What do they have in common? This is great. This is great. Mm -hmm. No, it's very nice. The king is alive, as some call him, Elvis Presley. And on this day, these Elvis faithfuls are planning and primping to revere their king. When I was 13, I borrowed an Elvis record from a friend. That was the first time I heard an Elvis song. At that time, I liked Gene Vincent, Eddie Cochran. But of all of them, Elvis was so unique that I decided to devote myself to singing like Elvis. And capturing the king's early years. There are so many impersonators in Japan who are Elvis in the 60s and the 70s. So why did I choose to become Elvis in the 50s? Well, that's because I was attracted to his 50s image, and I like singing his 50s songs the best. about Elvis's death in 1977. In Asia, the king is here to stay and is more popular than ever. There are thousands of official fan club members and in this part of the world, impersonation contests like this one in Bangkok are frequent. Fifteen Thai Elvis mimics competed in front of a record crowd. Do you think he had a lot of uh, characteristics that would be compatible to Asian values? Oh yeah, yes, in a way, yeah, and uh, uh, well, well uh, in his uh, later days, uh, he uh, he uh, joined uh, the campaign against uh, drug abuse and uh, against drug addicts. Uh. Of course, uh, people will say that he's a drug taker, but well, it happened to all singers. Uh. Hiroshi Ishikawa has been trying to fit into Elvis's shoes. Well, actually, jumpsuit for several years now. And as an Elvis mimic, he's even won the respect of Presley's original band members. He proudly shows us some of the kind of Elvis bonding he's had. And then there's the hip-hugging outfit. I got this costume specially tailored in the United States. I remember one Japanese who ordered his costume there. I spent just over 1,000 US dollars for it. It was very expensive. To be Elvis, you have to look the part, even if it makes a big dent in your pocketbook. And so what if half of the Elvis impersonators in Asia can't speak English? I'm not good at speaking English, but Elvis is a common language in the world. Even though I can't speak English well, it's possible to express the values of Elvis.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Meet Chito Burpal, Philippines' star Elvis impersonator. The 58-year-old says it's a plus having English under his belt. That's an advantage because uh, we are taught English since we are in grade one. So maybe the diction will, will carry on a uh, little on that. But, you know, they say that the difference between my voice and Elvis Presley is the diction because Elvis Presley is so it's slung. So I do my beat and I get to memorize the songs as they come on lyrics. Cheeto won his first Elvis singing contest in 1958. Since then, he's clinched two more and today broadcasts weekly a radio program devoted to the king. When he's not broadcasting on Sundays, you can find him in this specially soundproof room, singing Presley's less than signature tunes. I like things that makes it difficult and hard to deliver and full of emotions. That's the way I like them to be sung. If you should leave me now, don't leave me now. The what? I do the history. If I must be alone, but by myself, come to this own. Well, uh, my profession is really I'm a certified public accountant. Every time they introduce me, my environmental side is off. It's always Elvis. Oh, that's Elvis. So <laughs> I have to contend with that because I've been singing for quite a time. Cheeto admits Elvis has some stiff competition these days with the younger listeners. And like teenagers, they have their own thing. They enjoy uh, listening to Michael Jackson. They enjoy listening to Britney Spears. Oh, all of these new, new guys. And that's why Hiroshi Ishikawa is committed to keeping Elvis's memory alive in Japan. He wants those who were born well after the king's death to know that Elvis and his songs are timeless. Many young people who like Elvis understand him, and people usually find out about Elvis from their parents because their parents' generation was the same as Elvis. So that's why I would like the new generation to know about Elvis Presley. And that's why there are parties like this one, an Elvis extravaganza, where nearly a dozen impersonators around Asia gathered literally to share notes. Malaysian Justin Lim is 13 years old, and he's already gotten Presley's moves down. And of course, you have Melvis Kwok. He's one of several Hong Kong mimics who's become a regular fixture in Hong Kong's nightclub scene. But ironically, it isn't quite his singing that leaves an impression.